What's so special about the golden century? And what's so special about Vermeer? And what's so special about the milkmaid that he painted? There's estimated that there have been made over 5 million pictures in the 17th century. But why do we only see this handful of masterpieces? Is the milkmaid really one out of a 5 million? Or is it maybe hyped? I'm not an art expert and I haven't seen all 5 million but I started a series of paintings that's all inspired by Vermeer's paintings. And through this process I discovered some remarkably interesting things that I want to share with you. Right now I'm working on my modern milkmaid. This is Daniel Douglas TV and Daniel Douglas, that's me. This is Nana. She's posing for my next project, The Milkmaid. So I started with an underpainting from brown and white. For this I used acrylic paint and gesso. When the underpainting is done I start with a mix of burnt shenna and linseed oil. And that way I can mix wet and wet. Holland, the 17th century, the golden age, this was a revolution in art history. And if you ask most people what was so special about this time, they will mostly revert to the subject matter that was painted. Before this time, most painters would paint Greek mythologies, Roman mythologies and biblical stories. And suddenly they started to paint ordinary people doing ordinary things. Like a girl reading a letter in front of a window, a guy smoking his pipe or a pretty girl pouring some milk into a bowl. This had all a lot to do with rich tradesmen in Holland suddenly making a lot of money and wanted to have something else on their wall than some saint or some Greek god. But this was not the only thing that's so special about this time. There's something that I find even more interesting and that was the light. Before that, painters had always been painting light in service of the people that they had been painting. For instance, here you see some examples. It's all very good painted, but the people are telling the story and the light is modelized, stylized to fit their expressions and to show what they want to tell you. In the 17th century, suddenly there was Vermeer and Vermeer showed a woman was standing in the room and the light was just left the way it was. There was a huge shadow on her face but it didn't matter, it was about the light. And Rembrandt took it even further. Here you see Mother Mary breastfeeding Jesus and the light that shines through the room is shining exactly on the place that Rembrandt wants you to look at. So this is the huge shift. Suddenly, it's not the people that are telling the story, suddenly it's the light. Here's milk.
Milky, the marvelous milking cow. It's fun to milk her, gonna do it right now. She drinks the water when we pump her tail. She's raising her head, it's milking time now. Her pretend milk is a feeling the pail. She drinks water, I guess pretend milk. Milky, the marvelous milking cow. Milky, the marvelous milking cow with pretend milk tablets. She's new. start with the milk. Even though the milk is very white and you would say it's one of the lightest things in the picture, I'm not gonna paint it the lightest because it will distract your eyes from the point that I want you to look at and that's the light from the phone that I find so interesting. Even though I try to come as close as possible to the right tones. In this layer I can always add another transparent layer over it in the glazing process at the end. And now I'm going to compare Rembrandt with Vermeer. Not that there's one better than the other. You know, that's the cool thing about art. Unlike sports where you've got scores, like you can say this guy's got one and this guy zero or whatever and then you can say I am the best. In art you've got cool, very cool. It's not about winning or losing. It's about putting effort into something to tell a story. Brilliant, perfect, lovely, beautiful and stupid. Well, yeah, that's where we have to deal with. But just let's stick on to the beautiful things. Rembrandt really focused on the light and the rest was very dark. Everything was in a sort of a dark space so he could really focus on the light. And everything was painted very roughly. And if you look at a lot of the portraits and also a lot of the other paintings that he did, there's not a lot of detail, there's not a lot of stuff around. With Vermeer everything is in focus until a certain extent and because of that you can tell that everything he puts in the painting he put in there for a reason. Everything is symbolic and this is something that's very real to me myself because I am painting as well. And if I make a big painting with a lot of detail, I think about every detail, every object that I put in the painting, every object must have a story. Next week, in part two, I want to go deeper into these things and I want to analyze some paintings of Vermeer and tell you about what I see and what I think that Vermeer wants to tell us with the details he puts in his paintings. La 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 la
as you can probably see the first layer is almost done I almost covered the whole painting with the well I should say second layer of paint but this is the first oil paint layer the very first layer was acrylic with gesso just a monotone underpainting with black and white this is the most important layer to me but I can still add a lot of details and a lot of adjustments in the last two layers mostly I do four layers next week I'm gonna tell you more about the other layers like the glazing and how I do that a lot of people always ask me like it doesn't take a lot of time for oil paint to try well, I never have these kind of problems for some reason my paint always dries in a few days no matter what I use sometimes with poppy oil it takes a little bit longer to dry but even if I use a lot of oil or almost no oil at all it always dries quite quick with me and I can add another layer in a few days after I finished the one before <laughs> Bedankt, bedankt, 27 abonnees, misschien is het relatief nog niet, niet echt heel veel, misschien is het nog niet genoeg om mezelf een YouTuber te noemen, maar toch ben ik blij met elke nieuwe abonnee en ook blij alle duimpjes omhoog en met alle views bedankt, bedankt. Want zonder jullie kijkers had ik geen kijkers, dan zou ik hier misschien ook zingen. Maar nu zien jullie mij zingen en kunnen jullie ook. Genieten van mijn liedje bedankt, bedankt, bedankt YouTube, want dankzij jou kan ik delen mijn liefde voor kunst, mijn liefde voor muziek, mijn liefde voor geschiedenis, mijn liefde voor filmen, bedankt, bedankt. Het is allemaal zo anders als tien of twintig jaar geleden toen we nog met z'n allen, weet je nog, voor de tv zaten te kijken en dat moesten consumeren wat ons voorgeschoteld werd. Maar nu kunnen we lekker kiezen, dus op het wereldwijde web bedankt. The whole painting is sort of anointed by this blue stone. Ik moet even zitten, of even pauze. Ja, graag. Oh, I don't think he... Ik denk dat hij... Bye bye. Ik ben een beetje scared van dit <laughs> okay, I have to explain this. I've I've been attacked. I have to explain this. I I have been attacked by one of these cows um, two years ago. Uh, that's why I'm a bit scared. I was painting a nude model in the forest just here. <laughs> I'll show you. You see here the edge of the forest. A nude model was posing for me. And then we were, first we were attacked by ticks. And then we run out of the forest because we were scared for the ticks. And then when we were just coming out of the edge of the forest, all these cows were hanging around like this. And then one of the cows was 
running after me <laughs> because uh, uh, because uh, yeah that's what they do protecting their family 